I'm Pastor Richard Giovanetti, a senior pastor here at Standing in the Word Ministries in the program Fresh Fire. We wanted to introduce ourselves to you with all the things that God has been doing with, with us here in the ministry. We wanted to present ourselves to you to see the ministry that we are, the heart that we have, the call on the election that we believe we're called to stand in, and how in any way possible we can edify, strengthen, and build the body of Christ. We've been around for quite a few years, but our whole inception comes back down into the 1990s with the radical move of God and the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Many of you were all about those days, the joy and the laughter which was, which was sweeping through the nation and through the nations. And standing in the word ministries was right smack dab in the middle of this as the power of God began to fall. The fire of God began to fall service after service and a week after week, month after month into, into several years of the operation of a great outpouring of God. And every outpouring is a foundation always for the next level of every ministry and the next level of every life. If we, if we take the outpourings of God properly, we will recognize God is always building from one dimension into the next dimension. And when God's move and God's glory releases, it's always a platform and a time to see what God is saying and to begin to look forward into the future. From that outpouring, we would birth into our television program, Fresh Fire. We had a foundational scripture, which every ministry needs to have, and that is the operation of how you're going to always move forward in the call and the election of God. Because as the Bible says, without a vision, people are going to cast off restraint. They're not going to understand the call of God without the prophetic heart of God. For standing in the word ministries, it was Ezekiel chapter 37, where God took the prophet, dropped them into the middle of a valley full of dead, dry bones, and said, Prophet of God, can these bones live? And this was the challenge to us. This is the challenge to the body of Christ across the nations of the world. Can that which is broken and destitute and decimated, can it be revived? And God's word was very simple. Prophet, I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak to every dry bone and I want you to command it. Everything that I tell you to speak to it in church, that becomes the foundation for the ministry. Not only for us that's standing in the word ministries and fresh fire, but also for every ministry gift. Can these bones live? Can your city be revived? Can your, can your nation be revived? Can your, can your state be revived? Can your region be revived? To every one of us, when we grab the heart and the plan and the soul of God, revival always stirs that thing up into a fire, and that fire coming from the furnace of heaven as we drive forward is the kingdom of God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 2, go. this is how we move forward. As we, as fresh fire began to move forward, we began to find ourselves on station after station after station until we were covering almost the entire United States, finally all the way to the continent of Africa on TBN Africa, operated by Dr. Andre Roper's father and then under Dr. Andre himself. The work of God began to advance us as we went from America to the nations, ultimately back. The kingdom of God was advancing. We were there in Puerto Rico multiples of time. South Africa, we were there is down into the Philippines as revival was moving strongly. But understand, what is begun always has to have a continuation. So running with a pioneering spirit, Pastor, is the direction that we need to take. In Psalm chapter 2 and verses 8, the Bible says this, God said, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. Pastor, we have to make a decision. The call on the election of God is always honest because Jesus is always looking for his harvest. The call that God placed on you and the call that, placed, that God placed on us is very simply this. Every door God opens, every, every venue God places before us becomes a challenge at a time where you and I must grab a hold of the heart of God so we can consistently pioneer as as the Lord Jesus Christ builds ark upon ark upon ark for the safety of the people of God and the ultimate revelation of his second coming. When we go to Isaiah chapter 54, these are scriptures that God always laid into my heart. They're scriptures that God lays into your heart. But as we recognize dry bones must be established, it must be raised up, nations need to be built, God tells us to ask of him, and I will give you the ends of the earth, tells you the heart of heaven itself. So if the Bible says that God told the Son, ask of him, that same word goes to you and I. God, give us the ends of the earth. God, give us the nations of the world. Open up every door, provide and supply every need so we can see the harvest that you long for and desire. 
in Isaiah chapter 54, the word of God comes, to, comes again from the prophet, and he tells us to do something, and that is to verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent. That means enlarge the scope and the size of your vision. If the Bible says to ask of me, for the nations of the world and the ends of the earth is our possession, Pastor, then that means that we need to enlarge the vision of our congregation, enlarge the visions of our ministry, enlarge the place where your tent, where your covering, where your authority, where the anointing of God on your life is going to be, enlarge the place. And then the Bible says, and let them stretch out the curtains of the dwellings of your tent. And when you and I enlarge the vision, then that means that there are those that are going to come underneath. Let the callings and the elections begin to force you to begin to enlarge what you cover. Strengthen your cords and lengthen your st- I mean, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, and allow God to do what God is going to do. In the end of that chapter, in Isaiah chapter 54, the, the Bible says in verse 17, and no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. God set the vision down into us, and he began to open door after door after door as we began to move forward. The ministry doesn't have to be huge, Pastor. All that has to be large is your vision. Standing in the word ministries is not a mega church. We are a ministry with a mega vision, and that's all you need as a man of God. You need a vision that is greater. You need a vision that is stronger. Do not let your present circumstance control the vision and the future that God has laid up for your life. Make sure that when God is saying go, that he is going to provide line upon line, provision upon provision, because what God called for, he was going to pay. As we were ultimately across four and then five and then six different television networks all across, we watched God provide again and again and again and again. You and I saw the big transition. We went from analog TV back now out into social media. For many ministries, this was a big transition. For standing in the word ministries, it was the same thing. Moving from analog work over, over into all the digital work, was tens and tens of thousands of dollars, and many things had to be stepped away from as the transition began to go into social media. Many of you recognize that, and you remember that big shift, and many pastors probably lost sight of their vision, but I know many of you did not. But if you might have, I want you to grab a hold of the fact what God called in the foundation he is going to expand in your future. For, for us, from America to the nations of the world and back, operating with a pioneering spirit. It does not matter what your circumstances shift. What it means is God's about to move you forward. And then Facebook opened up, and then YouTube began to open up, Instagram began to open up. All kinds of social media platforms exploded, and we were wise as men and women of God to grab a hold of what God was doing and once again begin to launch program after program Program after program after program. Pastor, what God called us to is what God's anointed us to and what God's going to advance us. But I always want to bring it back to this. The revival of the 90s established a message and the strength and a precedent, something that would be needed to the nations of the world. As we watch the nation begin to tumble into disarray and into immorality, that message of that revival needed to be once again ignited and refired. And the heart of God had to be placed into the heart of the body of Christ, in the heart of us, so we can now engage future generations with the power of the Word of God. I want you to look in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 41, because as God began to put a demand on us to enlarge the place, we began to see that there was a shift that was coming. You and I saw it, and that was the word called COVID. When COVID arrived on the scene, it looked like something that was going to be the end, but rather, God knows how to work all things together for good. When you stay the course, stay the heart of your vision, never let go of the call of God. Dry bones must come back to life. Ask of me and I will give you the nations of the world. And God begins to hand you venue upon venue, the other nations of the world. And now as we moved into social media, we saw God now begin to expand more and more borders and COVID body of Christ, hear me, became one of the greatest tools that heaven used whenever the enemy wanted for evil. God turned it around for good. 
and he exploded into the market. As we move forward into COVID, standing in the word ministries did not miss one beat. We did not miss one service. We were already being obedient when we went from analog TV now into the social media and soon now into the digital world as things were about to expose, as things were about to explode, we stood our ground and when COVID hit, we were in the house, program after program after program. Pastors, never lose sight of the heart, the call, and the vision of God. Because from that point on, began, we began to see Zoom conference after Zoom conference. Pakistan opened up. India opened up. South Africa opened up. Zambia opened up. Tanzania opened up. We began to see Zoom's conference upon Zoom conference, pastors upon pastors upon pastors, all beginning to see what was happening in the social media world, now began to hunger and thirst for a gospel message that in many of our venues may never have reached their shores if it had not been for the transitions that were happening and even a disease called COVID. God has used it now to explode upon the nations of the world at standing in the word ministries. Doors are open to us as we began to not only do Zoom conferences all over these other areas, but we began to do Zoom crusades into remote villages in Pakistan over the last year. Five or six different crusades netted over 2,500 souls being one to Christ. Every door is a door for us to keep opening. Every time, there is an in, every time there is a hiccup, God's got an answer. No matter what weapons are formed, the Bible says they will not prosper. And Pastor, I am challenging you. As we have here at Standing in the Word Ministries, we never let sight of the call and the election of the goal that dry bones need to be prophesied to. Nations need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Crusades need to continue. Conferences need to happen. Pastors need to be equipped souls need to be one to God and an ark for God's kingdom has to be filled your ministry is an ark your ministry is a strong ark it's got to be a solid ark one that does not leak as you hold God's people above all the storms of life <clears throat> you equip them and you train them and you empower them when I had you over into Isaiah chapter 41 I wanted you to realize because there is a calling and there is a time when God says I'm going to grab a hold of the message church the message never changes, but the times do. The spirit of revival now needs to engage a generation which has never heard the word of God or up against the radical homosexual agenda, the LGBTQ operation, the drag queen things, the anti-America, anti-faith, anti-God, anti-family. Now our message must be strengthened, solid, strong, and determined and the Bible says I'm going to this is verse 15 of chapter 41 of Isaiah and the Bible says I'm going to make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth and you shall th you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff now it's time pastor for the words of your mouth to become like a sharp two-edged sword you are now about to find out the call and the election of God needs to be stronger than ever before. The doors and the doors and the visions God gave you maybe those many years ago, they are going to be resurrected into new dimensions of the call of God as now lives become nations and a few souls become multitudes of souls. And now what was ministry now needs to become mega ministry. Maybe not the mega church, but you got a mega ministry on the inside of your spirit. Spirit. And God says, now I'm going to refire that anointing inside of you. I'm going to refire that word that I put inside of you. I'm going to shape it to confront the nations of the world as you are standing here right now in the operation of God. In Isaiah chapter 42, that's why the word of God becomes the very theme of everything that we do. God has called you. And in order for us to do what we're doing here at Standing in the Word Ministries, we believe God called us. He called us to do a task and he called us to do a work. And that's why we must be diligent to never stray from the heart and the vision of God. Never let the circumstances around us begin to change our vision. Always let God's word hold us straight forward because you and I are going to stand before the king and we're going to give an accounting for the ministry and the message God handed to us. It is an honorable task. It is a servant's work. It's a privilege and a pleasure to serve the Lord Jesus Christ through our tenure here on earth. 
until we stand before him and we present him with the souls that he called us to touch. Nations of the world are standing waiting with their eyes wide open looking for someone who will bring the gospel of Jesus Christ and touch them with the word and the heart of heaven. And even though the rest of mankind or other areas may never know it, it exists, but you and I know that there are billions upon billions of lives which have never known the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 42, in verse 6, God says this, I have called you in righteousness. The Lord says, and I will hold your hand and I will keep you and I will give you as a covenant to the people and as a lot to the Gentiles. Not only does this very scripture designate the ministry and the calling of our Messiah, it now delegates and also reveals the calling and the election of the body of Christ. Church, you and I are now the representations of Jesus all over the nation of America to a generation which has been hijacked even to the shores of foreign lands where there are multitudes of millions caught up in the brokenness and the despondentness of life, false religion, cult activity, poverty, brokenness, and the gospel power of Jesus Christ must now touch them. And he says, I'm going to give you as a lot to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners and those that are bound, those that need the touch of God. I want you to go to the book of Joshua chapter 1 and look at one of the greatest callings I've always liked. And that is when God called Joshua, he calls you and I. And he has a dimension for your ministry. He has a platform where you can go. When we ask for the nations of the world, we ask for everything and then God can give to us everything he has in store for you. When you and I see in Romans chapter 12 what that measure of faith is, what that circumstantial ground is God's going to give us, we see it also in Joshua chapter 1 where God says to Joshua in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. The old season is, is done. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land that I am giving to you. Everyone God places into your hands. You have called to bring them to a place of completion. Every nation God has called you to touch. Every language God's called you to breach with the gospel of Jesus Christ is a platform that God's given to you to bring people to the place of their being able to know the victory and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you as I said to Moses. And he gave him line upon line upon line upon line. The vision. God placed into your heart. From a hospital bed, God would show me Pakistan. He would show me how God would begin to push back all the hordes of hell because he had a message. It was a season and a time as we would expand forth. And now as we prepare for those future visits and for those great crusades, God's opened the door. We are seeing that God fulfills where the vision and the heart is. He's preparing ground before you. He's preparing ground for your ministry. And we trust God to supply every need. He says in verse 5, And no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. In other words, what stands in front of you has got to fall before you. Man of God, you are called with the anointing of God to infect the reasons that God has given to you. He tells them only be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the nations. He shall you divide as an inheritance all the way through the nations, everything God hands to us. Now here's another responsibility. This all comes all the way back to Ezekiel chapter 37, and it's called Ezekiel chapter 33. And to every one of us, we've been given a bold responsibility. God has called you here at Isaiah 62 as a watchman on the wall of a nation. Pastors right now in America, all of you across, now that we've got Faith TV, God bless this great network, eight and a half million homes that we can touch to be watchmen on the walls of this nation to claim the kingdom of God and to put a demand on this nation. God has put a warning in your spirit and a warning in the message in your word. And this is the time when all old things need to pass away. And pastor, you and I must embrace the signs of the time and make sure the message that we are preaching is powerful enough to engage this nation and this generation with the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to determine, just like Jeremiah, as God spoke to him, do, do not be terrified about them, girl. I'll terrify your face because I will put a message in you and a word in you and an anointing on the inside of you. He's called you as a watchman on the wall. 
Every place that God opens up to us, he puts a demand that we are watchmen on the wall. Every nation that we have gone into, in fact, just in, just in this last year, we were in Tanzania. We were in Kenya. We were in South Africa. We were in Zambia just in the last year. And we have future events coming, possibly India, and then Pakistan, and other places. And those pastors, every one of them, are being challenged that you are watchmen on the walls of the nation that God has handed to you. And you and I, pastor, we are equipping those pastors. We're going in and doing the crusades there so we can see thousands won the Christ. And then in our conferences, strengthen those pastors because you and I get to leave and they're going to stay. So we have to give them the power of the word of God. In that, we go to Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to be reminded, every one of us constantly, of the servant call and the responsibility to why you are called a five-fold ministry gift, why you can stand behind the sacred desk, whether in your local ministry or in the ministries that you travel to. You are a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are an under-shepherd to the great shepherd. You are called with a responsibility to every soul and every life that is in front of you. And it's standing in the word ministries. Our goal is to endeavor that we are accomplishing that through every program, every message, every ministry that we do. And he says this in verse 11, and he, and he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Jesus gave you that anointing. You've been handed that anointing. That anointing is a mantle of serious responsibility like the high priest in the Old Testament. You've got to carry the revelation of that government on your shoulder and the very understanding of the compassion across your heart that the nations or the nation or the souls God gave you will stand before God clean and pure. He says in verse, he says in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We have a responsibility here at Standing in the Word Ministries with our program and every one of us. Pastors, we are no different. We all have to run our races side by side. That's who we are doing. And we run alongside every pastor and every ministry which will take the baton of the Word of God. Remember, you're going to hand it to an up-and-coming generation. Before God closes your eyes and you step into eternity, have you raised a generation? Have you prepared a people behind you that are ready to take that baton, who can run with the zeal and the heart and the fire, who will grab dry bones need to come to life, who will ask for the continuation of the nations, who will allow their tents to be enlarged, and they're willing to lengthen their cords and strengthen their stakes. Will they become a new threshing sledge? Will the voice that they have have the sharpness to carry the gospel? Have you handed them something? that they can long endure with and long increase with. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, as I, as I begin to bring this down, I want us to realize that we go all the way to the end. Somebody say, all the way to the end. I always say that in the house of God. All the way, all the way. Keep running your race, Pastor. We have transitioned now into, into the greatest season. Digital television today. We are on wonderful stations, JCTV in Pakistan. We are, we are on Jam TV, Jesus and Me Television, also in Pakistan. Kingdom Television in Pakistan. And now we are on Faith TV right here, USA, because of the great work of Dr. Andre Roper. We are touching nations from America to the nations and back. We are doing our part. Oh, I'm challenging you as I present this ministry to you in its purpose is that you are stepping up and you are running your race. If we run our races side by side together, then we will span this globe. We will see a harvest laid up at the master's feet. We'll be able to lay our crowns down with the understanding that we have just done a reasonable, honorable service. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28 and verse 18. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, always I am with you to the ends of the earth. Church, we can never lose sight of the great calling of God. If we lose sight of our future and our purpose and our election, we will lose sight of the ministry God's laid us up to do. 
Many have fallen away because they've lost their vision. Many have fallen away because they have camped on something in the past. In the past. Jesus said, I have no place to lay my head. And church, we have no place to lay ours either. Pastors, I am challenging us just as who I am to the best I can. We need to run our race with the greatest of diligence. I've given you a brief for us from our conferences and our crusades where our programming is, how we, have, well, how we have reached from the shores here to the shores there, how we've transitioned all the way through back into digital, all because we never let go of the vision that God gave us. Now finally, Ephesians chapter 6, and this is verse 10 and 11. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Church, we fight against principalities and power, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. But the Bible says if we've done all, we will be found standing. Standing the word ministries is here to see the kingdom of God, is here is to see the kingdom of God advance. And it's here to equip you to the best we can and to stir you that together we could be one man, the Lord Jesus Christ, touching the nations of the world. You have no lack. You have vision. You have calling. You have heart. You have revelation. You have provision. You have everything you need. Now together, let's stand up. Let's take the fight to the enemy. Let's take the nations for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's never let's go. Let's win the race. God bless you. Standing in the Word Ministries is a global operating ministry. We operate television programming throughout all of Pakistan on two very powerful television stations, one of them being a TBN affiliate, JCTV. There, we touch over two and a half million people every single week. On an almost monthly basis, we're operating crusades via Zoom into areas of Pakistan and other places, as well as pastors' conferences. We're seeing thousands of people won to Christ and hundreds upon hundreds of pastors being equipped with the Word of God. We stand in a position where we've been in Africa, through Tanzania and Kenya and Zambia. We've operated crusades. We have, we have several churches operating there now that we are trying to fund and equip them with everything they need so we can be most effective. Church, we are living in the last days and the greatest work we can do is take our place in the kingdom of God and advance it around every corner God has given to us. Today, we've been handed multiple opportunities to take our program again to the nation and to other nations. Millions upon millions of lives are desperate for the Word of God. We are asking you, if you'd be willing to partner with us here at Standing in the Word Ministries, as we endeavor to go through every door that God has handed to us, the people are crying out for the touch of God. Crusades that are now being needed in foreign countries, they are desperate to see the Word of God. Pastors by the thousands want the Word of God to be equipped into them because they're willing to take it to the people and they're willing to fight all persecution and opposition. That's why it is so desperate for us to take the challenge, to take the door that is open and go through every place we can to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to millions upon millions of souls. Please consider partnering here with Standing Good Word Ministries. Everything that we do is endeavoring to equip God's people to fill the ark of God and prepare God's people for the ultimate day of God. Until then, we are going to work to work diligently. That's why we ask you, please consider being a part of Standing in the Word Ministries as we take the message, as we take the word that God has handed us here to the nations of the world. Thank you for considering being a partner with us. God bless you.